And uh, welcome back for part two. Uh, thank you for those who are putting up with me for a second hour. Um, and thank you also to the many of you who emailed me since last time wanting more information, um, et cetera. Um, I think I've dealt with them all. Um, I will be checking my email inbox a little bit later on tonight. Uh, just a quick reminder then on the screen then, if you do want to email me, do do Steve the Doc. And if you want to get to um, any of the, to, to my website, it's that one under there, tiny.cc forward slash athletic TM with the capital A and TM on it. And that'll become probably a crucial place to go um, towards the second half of this evening. Um, let's just see if my, there we go. Because uh, when you get there, you'll be presented, as I said last week, with this uh, menu down the left hand side. So click wherever you think you need to go and uh, good luck. Um, feel free to share anything with me. Um, I do acknowledge where anything's come from. And so let's get started then. Uh, we dealt with a whole load of stuff that you could have last week and suggested where well, I'm going with wanting a truck as opposed to my uh, my van. Um, but if you're starting out low key, um, you may want some sort of box, uh, toolbox. I'm, I'm not suggesting any particular one, although this is uh, a series set that I'm starting to acquire at the moment. Um, one, because it comes bottom left with a base box on wheels um, as a bulk box, has a um, another box that's standalone on its own middle bottom, middle top is a kind of suitcase type style design and top left is an open case and they all lock together into a stand and the, if you put the crate open crate on top of those bottom right to make the three you have something that's about um, a meter twenty four foot tall that's uh, wheelable so um, <clears throat> if you're at meetings with me over the next uh, 18 months or so keep an eye out for for that lot um, it's called it, that one's by Magnuson, but you can obviously get other toolboxes around the place. Um, I'm getting mine from B and Q at the moment, although there's a website that I think has just come in a little bit cheaper at the moment. So uh, let's start out this evening with uh, javelin, and we'll talk a little bit later on a bit more about um, the um, the gauges. Um, here's an interesting one um, for javelin that allows you to do the diameters. Uh, maximum minimum in different places and the grip size on different size javelins uh, as i said we'll come back to gauges in a little while uh, to different sets um in actual fact we're doing it now aren't we of course um here is uh, an american set that conforms to world athletic side on the right is um a javelin one uh, that seems to have a whole host of things uh ingrained in it um, i haven't actually acquired one of these yet i'm hoping one somewhere over the pond on its way to me and on the left hand side is their version of the discus gauge um, more in a moment um, here's an interesting center of gravity checker for the javelin from gill no, currently it only does two sizes 600 and 800 gram javelin being the World Athletics uh, specs. Uh, it's an interesting one in the sense that uh, you balance it on the knife edge out here, and then so long as it doesn't, so long as the tip falls in between the wall at the left and the red line, then the center of gravity conforms. Again, as we said last week, it's about uh, yes, no gauges, and uh, this works well with that. Um, I'm currently trying to find a way of getting two more knife edges put on this so that uh, it will actually do um, fives and sevens and maybe even get down to doing a four as well in the same style. Uh, great for those meetings where you don't need the actual number, um, but you, know, you need to know that the center of gravity does conform, yes or no. Knife edges, well, pocket knives work really well, but one has to be careful about carrying those around and leaving them lying around. But as long as you've got a, a nice pointed edge, this one comes from Nerf, a bit expensive, but uh, you can use um, right angled stuff from DIY stores very nicely for it. 
<clears throat> and so here is my knife edge in, in action on a javelin length measuring gauge. You can see the bottom picture a lot longer. Um, <clears throat> I wouldn't suggest that anybody has their own individual one of these, but hopefully facilities have something similar, or you may have, um, I haven't put it in the presentation this evening, a sort of tablecloth type design where you have all the specifications marked out on it and you measure your javelin on top of it. Um, <clears throat> more about actually how, how to do those measurements, advice in a little while. <clears throat> I always like to carry um, a piece of hardwood like this with the holes in, it just sits on the floor and near the wall and the javelin tip is placed into the hole so that it, it doesn't actually go rolling around or sliding away from the wall in the equipment room. <clears throat> okay, just check in. Nobody's on the iPad at the moment. Um, I'm not running the bingo tonight, as, as somebody had it one last night. And I think most people, when I looked at the cards at the end, because I can still see how you filled them all in, um, I think most cards had just one to go. Um, but we'll come back to some interactions in a little while. Uh, measuring course on sticking with javelin. Um, we talked a little bit about calipers last year last time and this digital set here at uh, 150 mil six inches with a short jaw um, works really well for those diameters um, these come in usually priced depending upon where you're getting them somewhere between six pound and 20 pound i think the machine dro site that i suggested last week currently doing these for about 12 pound um, just watch out um, if they're not black headed case like this with the all the gubbings inside it. Um, for example, the Halford ones for cars um, only measure to one decimal place. <clears throat> Here they are in action, checking the diameter at the grip and in front of the grip. And there's just showing you the full end, full length of uh, a javelin gauge, uh, priced usually somewhere around about the 200, 300 pound mark. Um, I know some of you who are very, um, got very nice big garden sheds with all the right tools have uh, created your own versions of these. Uh, there are even a couple of designs around that are actually foldable, um, so make make for easier carrying. Because obviously, if this is going to measure the the longest javelin, then the full length of this is just just short of three meters. It's a bit difficult to put inside a car. Uh, it does go in the back of a, a transit van um, on the diagonals. Um, don't forget important gadget, your eyes and your hands for checking it. And we talked a little bit scales, weighing scales last time. Feeler gauges. No, we're not um, getting back into under the bonnet of the car. Of course, the feeler gauges are a way of actually checking the profile on the javelin. Here it is in action. So <clears throat> with a nice steel edge of the right length along the edge of the javelin, the gap in here um, should not should conform to the specifications that are in the rule book. Um, if you're getting your feelers, you, you won't find one single blade that is the right one. So you need to check because there are two set different sets of feelers out there. One set will not allow you to get the right thicknesses. The other one will. Let's uh, move away from our javelin now and a little bit onto the track predominantly, I guess, here and our spikes. Um, here's just a small collection of different kind of spike keys uh, for taking the spikes out or putting them back in. Um, there are different types of spikes. So I think you need about three, at least three different types of keys to accommodate all the spikes. And if you're checking the, the actual, I've had a number of questions over the last fortnight about actually uh, measuring the, the length of the spikes uh, from the top of the sole to the tip of the spike itself. Uh, this three spike checker is very handy from Nerf, uh, but if you're doing uh, endurance things as well, you may be interested in the Scottish athletics ones through Shona Malcolm uh, that actually have four spike lengths on it. 
uh, have a word with her at conference or any meetings. Um, very useful in the call room, but my advice would be that you make sure that you get it on a string or a lanyard that fits around your neck, as they are very, very popular and can go walkies if left lying around. Um, well worth not necessarily buying a set of spikes, but just making sure you've got a, a film canister perhaps or a bag uh, for when you pick up spikes around any facility that you can hold on to them and give give out to people who succumb to having problems, having lost spikes. And we talked last time about actually having the long jawed digital calipers for measuring the, the thickness of the sole of any shoes. Uh, very rarely done. All right. And uh, if we're out there, we've got to think about our comfort. Um, this is the one of the type of stools that uh, are made available to us at uh, televised meetings when we sit rather than stand for as much as we possibly can. Um, you can get your own version of these from uh, the Go Outdoor um, big chain of supermarkets. Um, I'm just waiting for July for um, this one to be become available through one of the catalogs. I've got it on back order. Uh, it seems to be uh, fold flat, so it sits like a nice little thing on the on your hip. You can carry around. So who knows if I'm technical manager in the future at some meeting, you may see me walking around with one of these that I can just extend to sit when I need and then carry around rather than trying to carry those other big folded ones around. And don't forget your set of cards that you may need, depending upon what role you have. Um, we've got our more commonly used now, red with black and yellow with black. But of course, our um, yellow what card is still used. Uh, anybody like to suggest a reason in the chat as to why you might hold up a, a whole yellow card? as opposed to a yellow and black. The uh, red, the whole yellow, red and greens were available uh, originally um, and then have been sort of superseded by the half red, half black. But yes, you're coming through with the, the conduct warnings that need to be logged and uh, carried through uh, and notified as appropriately. Uh, Last, we started that last week by saying that the rule book was important, but also having a copy of your safe conduct, your risk assessments, code of practice is always very handy to have in your um, in your bag or on your tablet. We'll talk about digital stuff in a little while. And don't forget your marker pens, uh, both dry erase and permanent markers, very crucial for you if you're in the equipment room in some way. And then don't forget, of course, your, your waterproof biros for doing your field cards. Um, I know down here in the South, uh, officials have been able to have acquire these quite easily at a uh, conference recently. And here we go. Uh, let me just see if I can actually get, hold this one up for you. I've got a 40 centimetre double-sided length of duct tape. Um, I'm suggesting asking you in the chat box as to why this is 40 centimeters by five why i might have it and it's nicely screw upable into a very nice bunch anybody coming in there um whilst you're just chatting on on that one i'll um just answer a question that's come in there the about the cards um they are rectangular size wise um they vary um British Athletics did produce a little credit card size booklet, which had a set of them in the back. Uh, so that's small. Traditionally, the ones that you see actually on at the start line with those guys um, tend to be A5 in size and nicely laminated. Um, just somebody suggesting this is about something to do with lanes. Not really to do with lanes, but it is, it is actually out, used out on the, the track. Um, I came up with this particular design um, at the anniversary games of the first year when uh, the track umpire suddenly appeared saying, did I have any, um, well done there, Alison, um, 40 centimetre rulers for the relay marker checks. The, you, know, you know, the tape they get the athletes take out and put down on the track. 
uh, even that has a specification. Um, and so I came up with this idea because then the, the officials could actually scrunch it all up, put it in their pocket quite nicely, take it out, and then simply put it over the top of any mark that they had suspicions about. And that's if they see any of the mark tape that the athletes put down, then it's foul, needs to be removed and adjusted because this is the size. And afterwards, it can just be go back in the pocket or worse comes the worse, if it ends up on, in the bin, nobody's worried. But trying to carry a 40 centimetre ruler around was a, a bit of a pain. And even with um, a tape measure, it's, um, I think the duct tape idea is, is better. So congratulations there to Alison Jordan coming in. And then of course, um, our, our new instant reforms for, um, with the new rule numbers on, uh, as issued by World Athletics, um, for those infringements around the track. Do you have yours? And notice my bottom left-hand question there, in terms of is it possible to, that we can start going a bit more digital with this? And so I'm just going to put something into my chat box for you. If you'd like to uh, click on that, um, hopefully it will load for you. I'm just going to open up my tablet. And you can imagine that you are indoors for this meeting and you are on the uh, 60 meter hurdles. <clears throat> One of the track umpires on that, choose the umpire you want, but the form should open and show you a the traditional diagram of umpiring positions and then have some questions that you can actually respond to. So if you, let's see which umpire can get an infringement in first. Um, language, please, Mr. Sage, otherwise you may be kicked out of the thing. I'm timing here to see the infringement because I'm the referee over at the, uh, the finish line area. And uh, yes, <clears throat> I can see that uh, some of these boards gone up. Um, it would be interesting if I could actually know what the infringement is so that without having to walk around. Um, I'm just seeing if um, anybody can get in there. <coughs> um, I think there's one down there in terms of, uh, I think I think we might go a yellow card on Mr. Sage there for um, um, conduct rule 18.5. Mr. Sage. Uh, I don't know if anybody's actually managed to submit one yet. My display here is still. Was that a second card, Mr. Askew? Yeah, giving away there. I'm just uh, appreciate there's probably quite a lot of responses to go in there. Um, we might come back to this one in a little while. No. I haven't picked up an infringement yet, but that might be some of you still trying to log in. <clears throat> Got some problems with uh, iPad. Thank you, Mr. Darcy, for the yellow card. <clears throat> so um, just for those who may be in the know, I think that's um, <clears throat> a yellow banana to Mr. Sage. Link worked for, for Mr. Oakley, thank you. And oops. Tablet just switched off. Just, are you uh, got any infringement you spotted there? You feeding back to me? Whilst you're still working there, LinkedIn work. Okay, we'll 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 leave it and we'll see if anything comes in for me in a moment. But um, moving on to uh, lovely little yellow markers here. Uh, useful in a number of different ways. <clears throat> I these little yellow ones. Uh, I've got I've got grey ones here with a number on as well. So the um, yellow ones very useful for leaving marks out on the infield when when you're marking out the, the sector lines, especially in the the London Stadium where they don't like you leaving the tape down any longer than a few more minutes more than the event is going to happen 
so you need to put markers out and uh, the yellow ones usually stand out well in the green grass as long as the london stadium staff don't move them um i'll just if you're trying to do this if you're trying to fill in the form just um um invent numbers for the athletes etc okay i'll see the forms in a bit um and, and anybody a suggestion as to i've got six of the gray versions with a little ribbon number on little bag of six anybody like to suggest in there um or was, was it mr oakley or you use this to throw from the seated throws do you that's a bit better mr hulse and mr sage um yeah they're a nice way of actually marking how far the throw has gone in seated throws when sometimes we actually um, allow them to, to throw three times um, before we actually measure anything, depending upon equipment that we have around. Uh, uh, cable ties, always nice to have a nice variety of those. Um, and as I said last time, I've just been acquiring um some nice uh, velcro versions this is um a small one uh, i've been getting them in a variety of colors they especially with the number of um electronic tv things that are lying around that are trying to bundle together it velcros nicely so stuff and is reusable um i don't think i'll get around to using any of these on actual hammer or discus cage nets um possibly a bit expensive for to leave there but for other purposes slightly temporary you may want them uh moving on of course other gadgets and gizmos uh in importantly is, is always a smile all right um and of course the appropriate wet weather gear and um, on good wet days you know do acquire the towels you know plenty of towels around you can never have too many towels when it's when it's wet for all sorts of reasons uh, in this instance here actually drying the 100 meter steel tape having just marked out those sectors uh madam jordan um mrs jordan there wanting to use the radios fine um so does the facility does the club have um suitable radios as required uh, watch this space. We're experimenting with um, apps for mobile phones that may actually have Bluetooth headsets um, with microphones built in um, that may mean that traditional walkie-talkie radios may not be required. Uh, if you want to see what kind of thing we're talking about, check out some of your big supermarkets now as staff there are wandering around with little headsets and little microphones that are wireless uh, that allow communication to go on. So watch this space on communications. Uh, don't forget your disability fixings. So the the plug for the for the hole, the actual fixing itself that replaces the plug when seated throws are happening, and the in this instance very large Allen key hex key um, for actually putting these in place or putting the plug in and putting in the hole here to tighten up okay uh, you do need to check with facilities as to which particular sizes they have <clears throat> always good to have lots of insulating tape last week we we used these to hold the shot to stop them rolling around uh, and indicated that useful to put a set out for uh, long jump markers to make up different markers, different patterns. Um, always nice to have a couple of small rolls in your pocket um, for out there when uh, high jumpers haven't got any particular markings. They want to put their bottles or their shoes or their coats on the on the fan. There we go. Our shot put sitting nicely on its insulating tape to stop it rolling around. <coughs> I'm just going to see if whether or not a few little chats. Um, oh, I gave something away. Did I miss Nicola Evans today? Okay, I, I, I won't say which one it is, but 
the crew of uh, apologies for surnames Hammond, Hulse, Moas, Flint, Hall, and Lee at Swansea in 2014 for the European um, Paralympic Championships. Um, the shot shoot did not come down from Glasgow after the Commonwealth Games. And um, we put this together uh, and it worked very nicely. Its length is getting on close to 10 to 12 meters. And um, a fair bit of experimentation to make sure that just how high it needed to be so that even a lightest shot placed on there would actually roll all the way to the end into the little dip at the end there. Um, Sadly, I didn't have enough space to put it in my vehicle at those days at the end of it. And so we donated it to the Swansea facility. I don't know if it's still there or not. Uh, brings back memories, I suspect, for a number of you. Um, I'm not quite certain which picture I show. Oh, the orange chalk bowl. I'm not certain that's a particular Mondo one. Um, I've seen one recently that's actually transparent, so you can actually see the chalk and hands inside. Moving on, uh, John Boy may come into his element at this moment in time, in terms of we're moving into hammer. And on the right, you'll see the actual little spindles that actually uh, screw into the hammer in order to allow the wire to be attached. And there are the holes, the distances between the distance between the two holes varies depending upon the make of the hammer, etc. So this is a nice Polanic set of tools for getting the top spindle out of the hammer, um, assuming it's nicely lubricated. Uh, here's one for the, um, yeah, this is again Polanic. <coughs> Here is one that, um, this particular one was made for the Commonwealth Games some time ago, and John Askew kindly sent me the photographs of it. It allow it's double-ended, so it accommodates both types of spindle widths. And if anybody is wondering, thinking it looks familiar to something, well, here is something that will work for you. If you've got the, any of those um, power tools like hand grinders, this is a version of the tool that you get to actually change the plates, the discs in there. Um, this particular one is adjustable. Well, oh, a bit tight that one. Here's another one that is adjustable that you can actually, one thing so for less than a tenner. Um, this particular one also allows some other bolts styles in there. So do check out there for your hammer. And I guess uh, Mr. Askew is as bad with hammers as I am with um, gadgets and gizmos. This is John Boy's spares box. Um, never allow people to throw hammers away. Um, see what you can repurpose from them, what you can acquire from them in terms of the spindles, the swivels, ball bearings for some of them, um, grub nuts for some of them. Um, even saving some of the hammer hammer handles, checking those out. Um, these these spindles themselves can be expensive, running from I've seen them priced between five and twenty five pound a time, even for the same style, depending upon manufacturer. So do start collecting your spares. Um, whilst we're talking spares, think also not just hammers, but um, other bits and pieces for high jump stands, pole vault uprights, hurdles. Um, if people are getting rid of stuff that is no longer used, see what you can cannibalize from it as spares. Label it up as the make, and you could be find yourself very popular one day at a meeting, and you've got exactly the bolt, the piece that is broken or missing that will enable an event to actually happen if you give them it. Um, we talked about um, gauges earlier. Uh, here's the combined hammer and shot ones. Um, top left are the style that uh, Neville Corey used to make. Uh, unfortunately, he's not making them at the moment. Uh, on the right are the ones that Steve Jameson 
uh, is having manufactured up there in the north east side of things. Um, so you can contact me and I'll put you in touch with him. Um, usually he we like to get an order of eight complete sets um, because that's what comes out of the whole thing, makes it uh, more economical. So if you're interested, usually somewhere, depending upon price of steel, <coughs> excuse me, somewhere between 80 pound and 100 pound for a complete set of hammers ones and there's a set of discus ones as well i'll show you a different kind of discus in a moment um we'll probably see whether or not we can actually get be nice to get a set of orders in ready for next april's national conference that people can then pick them up because you can imagine posting almost doubles the price of these things so doing the old um, car boot swaps in car parks at meetings with these things are much easier. So get in touch with me or get in touch with Steve Jamieson regarding um, gauges. Um, and I'll just um, hold up um, a style that I've just been sent by a German company. Uh, this is discus ones. Um, interestingly, some of you may have spotted, we've got the, the maximum diameter the minimum diameter uh, we have the rim diameters max and min and also the little thing here allows us to actually take a discus and in see whether or not the actual thickness at the center conforms as well yes or no um, <clears throat> they do the a set of four of those at the moment um, this is the, the 1.5K discus one. Um, again, um, don't go rushing out trying to buy these things, but uh, check them out at meetings, come see us, and um, we may be able to help you with those. Um, somebody's talking about 3D printing, are you of the gauges? Um, I think it's preferable to actually have these made out of metal. And so I suspect 3D printing of metal is very, very expensive at the moment. Uh, those were Perspex ones that um, Peter Lee used to have manufactured. So some of you will be going back years ago when you had those. Um, last week, we talked about having your set square and your ruler for doing diameters on discus. You, you, if that's what you've got, you can use it for your shots. Um, hopefully facilities have some sort of hammer length measuring gauge. Uh, here's the one that we have at um, Allianz, in all its glory. Here's one that, uh, here's what I used to have made was a laminated card. Uh, you can see how old it is by the fact that it actually has maximum and minimum length. And of course now we only have maximum lengths of the wires. They can be as short as they want um not advisable so the bottom line is a meter off the floor so i just go to a venue measure a meter off the floor put that line on it stick that to the wall and i was good to go for all the different hammer lengths required again that's just snows <clears throat> I think I better queue all up again in the chat box. So uh, here we go. This image is device for doing big clue on the right, an alternative, more expensive version. Who's going to come in first? Who's got who's got the quickest fingers? Fastest finger on the button should be headed for center of gravity. I'm going to give it to Mr. Morland there for adding in the actual hammer bit. So it's the center of gravity on the hammer. 12 millimeter diameter knife edge to ensure that central gravity is there for the hammerhead without wire, without wire, unlike the Polanic one illustration. Um, again, excuse me just for a moment. No, I don't need to go, I've actually got it here. Um, our hammer expert, John Boy, uh, took an idea I had and has made a very nice professional looking bit of decking planking with the inappropriate 12 millimeter diameter knife edge uh, and stuck it in. Uh, somebody's asking about the shot. The shot does not need to have a center of gravity. 
not in its specs. <clears throat> so moving on, um, looks a really nice idea. I must admit, years ago uh, when I was starting to get re getting into all of this gadgets and gizmo side of stuff, um, to actually not have the, the hammer wire bent over on a traditional set of scales, um, I thought these luggage scales would work really well. But if you saw this version last week for the um, hurdle topplings, you'll realize that they only measure in 10 gram increments, so no use. So let's move off of uh, the hammers and um, move into our high jump pole vault, uh, which is interesting. Uh, again, if you get broken bars, see if you can cannibalize the end bits, okay? Notice um, the style at the bottom in the middle, underneath the gill one, with the half drop becoming very popular uh, with the athletes. Um, technically, it does lower the center of gravity of the bar slightly uh, when it's on the uprights. Um, it is apparently harder to knock off. You have to, you have to knock it harder at any height to knock it off on. Um, but they do tend to go out of sag specification very quickly or about sag in a little while uh watch out for the bottom left type of bars uh with the open ends uh we suddenly discovered at the anniversary games one year with nordic bars and the nordic uprights we had for high jump that on the upright there was a lovely bolt on the support bracket that just the head of it just fitted nicely into that hole so we had to find a fix to actually um, not the mass to the bar, um, but actually block off that hole. So bolt didn't slip in there and hence stop um, the bar from ever falling off the uprights. That high jump competition could well have still been going on. It could have been my, my, my world record before the pole vault in Glasgow earlier this year. Um, I've seen, um, number of officials now starting to take um, short lifters for high jump because certainly um, at increasing meetings depending upon how tall you are um, the bar is getting very very high um, at the the world championships even with our two tallest officials on the support there they had to use the lifters or they were supposed to um, catch me another time for more of that story uh, plum bobs uh, very very useful for um, checking the bar is above the back of the box when setting up or where the uh, center of the bar is on the ground for the high jump checking but also very useful in Paralympics Seated throws, all the um, all parts of the seated frame are inside the circle. Especially when you get those handholds that are really high up, you you need the plumb bob to actually help guide you down to do that checking. Oh, bars have slipped in a second time. Um, <clears throat> any suggestion as to what might be inside this bag and why? It's there, why I've put this in. Big clue in the background picture to help some people. Fastest fingers on the thing there. Shot to measure sag. And it is indeed a three kilogram shot. Um, you actually measure the height difference between the bar without the three kilograms in it on it and with it on. And there are specifications for just how far it needs to go. Um, <clears throat> if anybody's checking on the chat box, I do think that that is another yellow card, uh, Mr. Sage. Uh, if you want to see a um, whole load of stuff about the bar, setting it up, checking it, etc., for the pole vault and high jump and markings, um, I found a nice video. This is a still from it from America, uh, five minutes long, showing all sorts of different checks on those bars. And again, it's on the website, um, which we'll come back to in a little while. <clears throat> uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Mr. Sharp, Dick Sharp here. Uh, this was his little creation uh, using an old bind set of ring binder metallic bits right, uh, to actually create a, um, a pole vault stands position indicator that can actually be attached to your own clipboard on the side. So it just hangs on the side and you way of communicating quite easily to the people at the uprights just where that is. <clears throat> Recent find for me um, was this particular set from Docker, Docker Zoo um, of a telescopic. Um, I've been on the lookout for this sort of thing. Um, this one actually extends in totally collapsed form is two meters in length and when fully extended goes out to seven meters so that is more than enough to accommodate the pole vault um i suspect for a good few seasons to come uh it's very stiff um check their websites um a bit expensive for one traditionally they're about 60 pounds uh, but notice the lever rather than the twisting locking mechanism uh, has the standard screw top fitting. Um, I was lucky enough to find a pair on Amazon for £60 for the pair. So again, do check. I'll have them in the van uh, when I'm allowed out to a meeting. And here we go. Six points up for grabs in this uh, zoom in, zoom out. We're going to zoom in on um, the device and uh, the six points, what do you think this device, this gadget is? Look, wind gauge is coming in. Uh, five seconds, I can get the five second one. Of course, there should be some other markings of its wind gauge as well, okay, for our track events. But let's zoom out a little bit. Oh, maybe it's not a wind gauge for five points. Anybody want to change their minds? And for four points, Greenhouse does not come with this implement, but courtesy of um, Bob Hammond and his colleague down there in the south. And for three points, posh scoreboard, not quite. Let's see where you're coming from. Big clue, it's only got two digits on. Big clue at the bottom of the board, not a clock in this instance. But one point, it is an electronic pole vault stand indicator for easy communication by chief judge down to the two officials, hopefully two officials down at the stands. They can quickly adjust the position of the pole vault uprights. And how are we doing for time? Oh, lovely. Okay. Um, I want to now just turn my attention to sort of some digital stuff. Uh, traditionally, it would things like this would be some of them would have been available as simply paper stuff, photocopied and passed on from person to person. Um, now uh, it can all be digitalized. And as first attempt a little bit earlier with the uh, infringement thing, um, may never need to be on paper in the future. These are all somewhere on my website, so um, I'll just mention them very quickly in passing. Um, a spreadsheet that allows you to um, record all the um, measurements you take on all the different implements and prompts you to do it. Uh, thank you very much for assistance from and Pulse in helping to take this thing further than I had originally got it. But here it comes up prompting you with what you need to do. And in these light yellow boxes, you simply record the actual value you measure. And the red area hopefully will go green because it conforms. Um, you can save each set of measurements, um, which makes it very easy to produce um, at World Athletic meetings, the um, <clears throat> sometimes the ITO wants a list of all the uh, specifications that we all the implements that we used and their specifications and how they were um, met or not met um, 
So even when they're rejected, we need to keep a record of them at that level. Um, and it's just being moved up a little bit. I'm starting to add some images in some of these things. And if I just go back one slide, um, it also ha allows you to actually print out all that recording for any individual implement. So kind of a passport type thing. Not that I want any athlete turning up at a meeting next week with a printout saying it was all right last week. All right. It also over on the right hand side here also allows, or oh, must change those, um, access to the IPC implements, including uh, checking the seat frames, the um, racing chairs, and the um, uh, race running frames as chairs, bikes as well, all recorded. <clears throat> I acquired a lot of this particular spreadsheet. Just look at all the tabs across the bottom there, which um, for things like the anniversary games becomes my central base for organizing the meeting in the sense that we'll have the Gantt chart up here. We'll have the timetable down here with various bits of information. Um, from here, I can go to the spreadsheet is set up to allow me to quickly print my implement labels, uh, start lists for my runway markers. It allows me to know what the arcs are and what boxes required out on the sectors. Um, has the world records in there as well, because you sometimes put in there. The first tab I normally fill in is my staff one there, where I have the names of clerks, equipment officers, and um, email addresses. So it's all in one place. The timetable that comes from British Athletics gets put in the events one, so that very quickly. So it's all in one place. So do check that out on the website. Uh, if you look in the 2017 World Championships menu option, you'll find this and other documents from the 2017 World Championships completely filled in. The um, My clerking book on there, uh, now running to 68 pages, prints out A5 size, has um, site checklists. Um, you can cross out those that you know, those items that you don't want today, um, but hopefully over the last five years, a number of people have kept checking on this, and I feel fairly happy that it is pretty conclusive. Um, so on a double page spread, you'd get the long jump site checklist, um, which I print and put in an event site box so that we kit out with those things. Uh, on the right is the event site layout and the judges that will be there and what they're, where they will be positioned, etc. It also covers the tracks. So it's got the steeplechase layouts for water jumps and different distances um, and different stuff that you require for some of the track races, etc. So hopefully it's it's everything apart from the rule book all in one particular booklet. Um, one of the latest, uh, most recent Hulse Marshall um, productions was a spreadsheet for implement usage. Um, I'm hoping the next time I'm out and this is needed, this particular spreadsheet will be on a tablet at the event site. So you can see how it's a card and the athletes to there, the implement control official simply puts in the number of the implement the athlete uses in each round and, and automatically it does the counting and the checkups and the percentages that um, World Athletics require, the ITO require at the end of the meet. So it tells you every what the implement was, the IAAF certificate number, the brand and how much it was all used in different rounds, etc. Um, so on the go. Um, First time I used it on the computer um, at the anniversary games was one season when the ITO caught us at the beginning of the meeting to say that um, the last meeting he'd been to, none of this had been made available. So he wanted it at the end of the meeting. By the time he got to the equipment room at the end of the meeting, this was available and I showed him it. He said, well, when can I get it? I said, well, do you want it printed now? Or do you want it on a stick or do you want it emailed? 
So he had it on a stick and it was emailed to him. Um, the first time I had to do all these calculations was for Swansea for the 2014. I was unaware of it all and it was a massive paper exercise. And obviously for 10 days of competition for Paralympic events, it took me about two weeks to get all of this calculated up uh, before I could hand it in. So now much, much slicker. Um, again, something I'm working on at the moment is on the left is what I call my event site box. So there's checks at the top, setting up, make sure the technology is in there. And then the box that goes out to the site needs to have the bottom items in. Um, that's normally printed and put in the box in the equipment room. The clerks and I will assemble the box, checking it off. And I, before it goes out, I do a double check. And on the right hand side is my event site toolbox. I'm trying to establish small toolboxes that are ready to go out to an event site if there's a hiccup. So it would have in it just the right spanners, just the right things for that particular event, rather than taking out a complete set of spanners, a complete set of um, sockets, etc. So watch this space for those event site toolboxes. Um, I'll pass that one by quickly. Um, courtesy of Mr. Hulse, um, most of us don't actually have access to the wonderful CAD packages that are available. So this is a PowerPoint that actually enables us to actually create our event site layout maps that you saw earlier. Um, so bottom right, you have the basic event site and at the top of the, of the slide, all the icons for the different things that need to be positioned and you simply copy and paste any particular icon and move it to where you want it and then you can print it out. Uh, we are trying to start to gather together on PowerPoint different layouts of different tracks um, to help with this site. So watch this space if you're at a site at a track we might be after trying to get maps images that we can use. Um, there we go. Um, you, you had some of you were successful a little earlier on with the infringement control, infringement reporting form. Um, I'm almost at a point now where I've got um, an implement checking form. So on the tablet in the equipment room um, would be this form. Um, and so the athlete comes in uh, uh, and simply taps it away. Um, it would potentially allow the way I've got it would allow them to check in two javelin, two hammer, two discus, two shot, two clubs, two weights, um, all on the one form. So they only do their name once and it all immediately comes over to a spreadsheet for me. And I'm just working at the moment on a facility that would enable a photograph of each implement to be added to the form. Um, so we've got records of the forms, etc. So that partic those particular forms are not yet on my website, but watch out over the weekend. Um, so let me just, uh, how are we doing for time? Um, do check out some of those other uh, things. The, the PowerPoint is up on my website and will be with England very shortly. My label printer, uh, I've now just upgraded to a wireless one. Skipping over, don't forget that you can get apps for your smartphones, etc., that will do timekeeping for you and allow you to do laps. Uh, this was the one that I used to use for the Shaftesbury Boxing Day race, but I've now moved over to my own spreadsheet that uh, I click to start, and I just need to type in the numbers as they go around the laps and as they finish, and it records their lap time and their finishing time and their position. And so we're ready to print out the results uh, as soon as I've walked from the finish line into the clubhouse. Uh, don't forget your electronics. Starters will recognize the right hand one version of the PA system that they carry around. So that's kind of medium size. You get giant portable ones now. And here is a very nice little belt size one, which could well go for the starters assistance if you. Um, I used it at an endurance race when I was a starter's assistant recently. Very effective. 
and just proceeding. Uh, I just thought a little bit of amusement as we come to the end. Uh, a few photographs showing a circle going in place. Um, I know Mr. Sage has probably got that particular gadget in terms of the digger. All right, we'll let you back in, Mr. Tony. All right. Um, notice this is on the continent. So they actually manufacture their circles, including all the concrete off site, and then truck them in and lower them in when needed. All right. Uh, it makes the installation time very, very slick. Here it is going in place and just being leveled out. And um, sincerely hope, but I doubt it, that that is a um, shot circle. Notice the lack of cage. <clears throat> and presentation is all, all important. So even when you're working as a clerk, you have to be smartly dressed. Or is this because the crowds are already coming in and we're just putting the finishing touches to the sector lines? But notice also the plywood to protect the grass from the wheels of the cage. Um, if you're in the London Stadium, the tech room, we have to look after these pieces very carefully. Otherwise, the ground staff get very upset with us. Mr. Holtz does work uh, preparing for that brick to grind down the um, etched, acid etched circle. And don't forget your vacuum cleaner, right? And uh, extension leads, making sure you've got um, suitable um, attachments for them being outside. That's that's the power cables, extension leads. Parasols. I haven't quite got round to buying a tent, but I don't think I need one um, currently. Wet weather gear, weather writers. Um, nobody's yet carrying their own indoor circle with them. Um, especially if you use the one that we've had at the World Indoors or the European Indoors, the Mondo one, it is a weight. Don't forget your puncture repair kit for your um, wheelchair wheels, especially. Uh, first time I was anniversary games equipment officer, we were going to have disabled events there, para events. And the day before, I just happened to buy uh, a puncture repair kit and put in the box. And lo and behold, during the meeting, one of the athletes came to us, with their day chair, and required their inner tube to be repaired. Interestingly, it was a 22-inch wheel with a 24-inch inner tube, so it was folded over. Quite a nightmare, but we succeeded. Club storage, a nice rack for clubs. In the equipment room, some of you will have really smart, tidy equipment equipment rooms that you can look after yourselves entirely and some of you will have your own ways of making all your racks don't forget be prepared to deal with your prosthetics although a lot of the athletes do carry their own kits and do their own repairs if Otto Brock are not there that's the company from on the continent that sometimes come to the big meets and let me just return to my electronics digital stuff with the trump cards if you're not familiar with them uh, there's a field set and a track set. The idea being here that they just highlight where the rules are different in powers from non para events. So you can just pick up in this instance T12s, F12s, a field. So there are moderate visual, visual impairments. And this will tell you in each event what is specifically different for that category in that event rather than having to remind yourself by trying to find everything all over the rule books they were updated in march so hopefully mr mason will be happy when he does his power rule changes something that just came across my way last night um, was the new wave light technology hopefully it won't be down to us to deal with but these are the lights that go all the way around the track for pasting and for coaching my wheelchair um excuse me my steeplechase plug drainage plug Keep your hurdles tidy. Won't worry about the indoor thing. Watch this space for more developments on this gadgets and gizmos. I'm exploring things to do with sectors and tapes, etc. And if anybody's still on the chat box, um, have a look at this image. If you put a plus before your comment in terms of things that you're happy with, as this hammer cage is being assembled, and a minus against anything that you're 
unhappy with in terms of gadgets and gizmos or safety stuff there. Did somebody, oh, somebody just tell me about the impossible games, yeah? Red button on BBC very shortly, yes? I just love the lack of um, hard hats, lack of boots, still toe capped. I just love the palette that's holding that particular upright up. Uh, no barriers around the place. Amazing. And then, of course, um, three very important gadgets here. One, a very accommodating groundsman who will look after the flowers for you. Bottom of the steeplechase barrier, the chain to the plug so it doesn't get lost, especially when it's pulled out very quickly and just left to one side. But then probably the most important group around are Trap Team 500 in the background there um, who I've had the honour of having on the team, tech team, for many meetings at London Stadium now. Uh, John Askew had the interesting idea last season of actually joining them for a day and working with actually on the team. Um, I've not yet managed to do that, but hopefully one day. Um, just wonderful the meetings couldn't happen without them. And so there we go, up to our final slide. Um, just to remind you, the email address and website for getting those things. If you can't find it on the website, email me. Somebody did say, was this on the website? Can't remember what you were talking about. Uh, check it out or email me directly and I can reply to you. So I hope it's been a useful hour and just a tad bit more this evening. Uh, as I said, plead out if anybody's got anything else that they think would like to add. Otherwise, I'm going to pass back to Charlotte.